Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldong. Today, I'm going to do a manga review for Your Lion April, Volumes 6 and 7. Be sure to also check out my movie review for Baby Driver. Next week, I'll have a manga review for Your Lion April, Volumes 8 and 9, a reading of my short story, The Underachievers, pages 3 and 4, and a movie review for Spider-Man Homecoming. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismoldon.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories into horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube or SoundCloud. And if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to give a recap, a pretty detailed recap of Volume 6 of Your Lion April, and then give my thoughts on the volume, and do the same for, <coughs> excuse me, uh, do the same for Volume 7. So let's get right to it. Uh, let's recap Volume 6 of Your Lion April. Uh, the volume begins with Cowrie uh, taking a record of Chrysler's love sorrow. We're shown a performance from Hiroko. Hiroko is then visited by Ochiai Sensei, who is Emmy's instructor. They went to school together. Ochiai Sensei says that it's been two years since Saki Arima, uh, Kosei's dad, or mom, excuse me, dad, mom, I'm sorry, Kosei's mom, passed away, and Hiroko never went anywhere near the Arima family. In the music room, Kosei and Kauri practice. Kauri uh, comments that Kosei's heart isn't into the music. Kosei asks if they have to play this. Kauri says that she wants to play that one. Uh, Kauri questions why he's so against the piece, even though it's full of love. Kosei reveals that Love Sorrow is one of his mother's favorites. And she used to play it all the time, even when Kosei was sleeping under the piano. Kosa reveals that the piece reminds him of his mother, and then Kauri watches Watari play soccer. He asks her if she likes Kose. She says, yup, but says that she loves all of her friends. She then says that we move forward and we can't stay the way we are. Hiroko, her daughter, and Kose go to a festival. Kose tells Hiroko that the piece has too much of his mom in it, love sorrow. He wonders sometimes if his mom resented him. Hiroko asks how any parent could resent their child. Hiroko then says that that moment when Kosei defied his mother was a moment of growth for Kosei as a human being and as a pianist. Kosei asks Hiroko if his mother would forgive him and is it okay for him to play the piano after he tried so hard to forget her. Hiroko tells him that if that's how he feels, just play. He tells him to listen to his mother's voice. In an inter internal monologue, Hiroko says that Kosei has to play to grow as a penis and to say goodbye. In the school music room, Kosei and Kauri practice together. However, however they are at odds in how Kosei should be playing the piano. Uh, back at the festival, Hiroko says that if Kosei can't hear the music, maybe he's not limited to the constraints of audible sounds. She tells him that that is his gift. Kosei, with Kauri on his bicycle, go back to Kauri's home. On the way, they sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. They go to Kauri's home, which is a cake shop. His parents know of Kosei and invite him to eat. Uh, Kosei and Kauri then walk home together. We're then shown Kosei, uh, Kauri, Watari, Tsubaki, and Kashiwagi lighting fireworks near the, um, near the school pool at night. Um, Kauri and Watari fall in the pool. Uh, as Kosei looks up, he sees light. They then rescue Kosei and he realizes that light can shine, th shine through even to the bottom of a dark ocean. Kosei practices piano f for the gala, but Hiroko still criticizes him. Uh, she tells Kosei to give into his, into his impulses more. 
at Tilla Hall, people are talking about Kauri. The one who got first place, Toshia uh, Mike, uh, criticizes Kauri and calls her performance over the top grandstanding. A person wearing a hood and mask appears. Ochiai Sensei uh, then appears and knows that that person is Emmy. Backstage, they then go uh, take their seats. Uh, backstage, <laughs> Kosei is angry because Kauri hasn't shown up. Watari calls her, but Kauri isn't picking up. Hiroko asks Mike if they can go on later, but he refuses. Uh, Mike gets angry and says that what she played wasn't music or anything. Kosei says that he understands Mike, but tells him that we will that we will be the stars today. When Kauri's performance is up, Kosei walks to the stage alone. Kosei ends up playing Love Sorrow on the piano by himself. In a flashback, Hiroko plays the piano in what looks like Saki's home. Uh, Kosei comes by and plays the piano, even though he's had no training, and plays very well. Hiroko runs up to Saki and tells her to make Kosei a pianist, and says that he's a genius. Kosei plays Love Sorrow and starts playing perfectly. He then plays super fast and intense, as if he's not even trying to fight his emotions. Kosei asks his mother, or uh, Kosei asks if his mother played like this. He slows the tempo, softens the tone, and the music changes. He can't hear the music, and there's but there's music inside of him. He plays like he's holding a baby, like his mother told him. Um, Hiroko says that she's the one that drove him to this. In a flashback, we're shown a young Hiroko hugging a scared Kosei. Uh, she says that if music causes Kosei nothing but pain, then as a pianist, uh, she can't be near him. The music begins to take on color. At the end of the volume, Hiroko says that she hopes that Saki is watching. Our boy is coming to say his last farewell. So, thoughts on volume 6. Kauri is not at the gala. Now, this is interesting because we keep seeing and getting hints that she's in the hospital more and more. We don't really know what's up with her health. I mean, we know she's into the music. I mean, she was practicing with Kosei in the music room. What's going on? Um, I think it can be strongly assumed that it is health-related. Unless she just got mugged or something, or, or, or something to that nature. But this is an ongoing thing with her. And it's very unfortunate because, you know, Kauri and Kosei together doing a performance like they did that last time is magic. Very unfortunate that she's not there uh, to play with him. So Kosei has taken it upon himself to play alone. Very interesting if you really think about it. Because um, this is a guy who refused the piano, refused to play, you know. First time he had to play was with the girl, and then he was kind of forced into the competition. Now, he's, he took it upon himself to play the piano by himself in front of an audience in a performance. It really goes to show his growth, his strength, and his courage, and him kind of growing up um, as the series goes on. Know a little more about Saki Arima. Um, she seemed really nice. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, what can you say? She she seemed kind of nice. Very, you know, young Saki Arima um, was not the woman in the wheelchair that's beating up her son and slapping him across the face. Obviously, big changes happen in order for this to happen. And Kosei is kind of giving this performance, it's pretty much, give, kind of, is giving this performance for his mother. You know, we, we got to know. One thing I really like about characters, um, personally, just as a writer, um, an author, is uh, characterization. I am really big on characters driving the story, not the story that drives characters. That's besides the point. The point I want to make is I always like duality in characters. I like to see the different aspects of these characters. Um, the mom wasn't always this mean woman that made Kosei the human metronome. You know? 
and Kosei loved his mother. He also, as time went on, he started to hate the piano, and then, in, in a sense, hated his mother, too. But now he's giving this performance for his mother, you know? Um, so everything kind of goes around full circle, you know? He loves his mother. He always did. But he, you know, he played the piano for her. He loved the piano. Then he hated the piano. In a sense, he kind of hated his mother. Now, he's playing the piano. Now, he, he loves his mother. He wants to play for his mother. It's a really nice coming, you know, we're, we're halfway through the series right now, volume six, more or less. And, um... You know, things are, in that sense, coming around full circle, you know. We're introduced to Toshia Mike. Very much, seemingly, he seems kind of like, he seems kind of bitter. I can't help but think that he's something of a very young human metronome, in a sense. You know, it, it, there's, there's a selfishness to him. Uh, he, he seems a bit robotic. But uh, maybe we'll know more about him later on. Got to know a lot more about Hiroko as well, you know. Very, um, she's kind of the same person, you know, in a sense. Uh, very carefree, but very caring. Um, her reasoning not to be around Dorima's was actually a bit sound, you know. I mean, it's just like, I, the, the fact of the matter is, a lot of this stuff's pretty traumatic. I mean, if you think about it, you see this little kid without a mom. You know, crying and just totally, uh, you know, collapsing under the weight of this performance. And you see the kid that you've known for a long time, you know. You know, you're friends with this kid's mom who just died. And it's like, you're not his mom. <laughs> it's like, I can see how she would just, like just from the trauma of it all wouldn't want to get away from these people which it sucks though because it kind of hurt Kosei because Hiroko honestly is coming off very much like a mother figure I mean she's still an instructor because she'll just tell it like it is to Kosei but she's also something of like the surrogate mother figure at this point and I guess it goes to show that back then as when he was at his weakest, she just wasn't ready to be that figure. And, and now she has her own kid too, you know. So maybe that also helps her to become more of that mother figure. And she can kind of relate to being the mother figure now that she has a daughter. Um, and and Kosa has also grown up too. So, you know, he's not going to be as hard to handle. He's growing up. You know, she says our boy. So it's pretty much like... She is pretty much like his new mother, more or less, um, which is really cool. You know, I, like I said, the, the characters drive the story. The piano and other things are kind of the backdrop to everything else. So, Volume 7. Uh, the volume begins with Mike criticizing Kosei's performance, yet admitting that he can't take his eyes off of him. He's making him nervous. In a flashback, Hiroko yells at Saki for... Uh, hitting Kosei. Saki says that she knows that she, uh, she knows that and that she doesn't have time as she cries. This is um, when Saki is now in the wheelchair and has a hard time breathing and whatnot. Ochi Sensei reveals that this uh, performance is for someone else who isn't there. In a flashback, Saki reveals that Hiro to Hiroko that she doesn't care what happens to her. She's worried about what will happen to Kosei when she's gone. All she can do is instill in him good habits of repeated practice. In an internal monologue, Kosei reveals that the ghost of his mother was a shadow that he made himself. His mother is inside him. When he played the piano, it's supposed to be like an embrace. Emmy says that she's glad that she came and uh, that she can chase after him again. In a flashback, Kosei asks his mother if there's love, joy, if... Um, or since there's love, joy, and love, sorrow, why is she always playing the sorrow one? It helps her get used to feeling sorrow. This is when she was still pretty well, too, um, before she was in the wheelchair. In the end of the performance, Kosei says goodbye. 
Backstage, Kose falls to his knees. He tells Hiroko in every little gesture he makes, Mom is there. His mom and him are connected. Kose admits to playing with everything he had and asks uh, Hiroko if that performance reached his mother. Hiroko hugs him and tells him that of course he reached her. Internally, Kose says that he's happy, he says thank you, and goodbye. The audience is still affected by Kose's performance. Not just, you know, it's kind of funny. It's not just the audience in the manga, but also the reader as well, I gotta say. They're not ready to hear another performance. Mike has to perform next. He wants to run away, but sees his mother and wants to perform. He wants to try to put that much of his heart and soul into his performance. Mike's sound is softer than usual. Tsubaki calls out to Kose but, uh, after the performance, as they're going home, but she reveals that she's not confident that she can talk to Kose. Hiroko and Ochiai Sensei then talk at a cafe. This is like later. Ochiai Sensei says that Kose has become an interesting musician. Kose practices piano in the music room. He struggles to find a way to contact Kaori. He knows nothing about her. Hiroko back at the cafe says that if Kose is going to move forward, he may have to do so through loss. Kose, Tsubaki, and Watari visit Kaori in the hospital. Her head is bandaged. It's revealed that this is twice that she's been in the hospital in such a short time. Kaori says that she got wobbly and hit her head. When they leave, Kaori looks at a school library checkout card with Kose's name on it. She then gets more IV fluids. Tsubaki eats with Kashiwagi. This is later. Tsubaki gets a text from Saito Senpai asking to go to the festival. Kashiwagi asks her about Kose. Tsubaki says that he's more like a little brother to her. Kashiwagi tells her that she keeps casting her little brother spell. Tsubaki gets defiant. She then tells her that someday it's going to be too late to fix it. Tsubaki and Saito Sen Senpai go on a date at the festival. Kose visits Kaori at the hospital, but he says that he doesn't like really like hospitals. He wants to ask her things, but can't get any of them out. Kaori uh, tells Kose that people have been criticizing him, criticizing him for crashing a violin performance. However, it's said that he is a real artist. At the Maiho uh, music competition, Emmy plays a great performance. I think this is the past, actually. Ochiai Sensei tells Hiroko to thank Kosei for her. Another brilliant artist has been born. Emmy wants Kosei to keep moving forward and don't look back. She swears that she'll catch up to him. Hiroko, though, says that she is worried about the other boy, Aiza. He's shown sitting in the hallway. He imagines reaching out to Kosei, and then kicks a nearby trash can down and walks away. Kaori asks Kosei why he performed without her. Kosei says that at first someone insulted her. Kaori tells Kosei that no matter what you do, you'll always be an artist. Kosei Arima-kun. Kaori admits that she wanted to play with him again. Internally, Kosei asks if she'll disappear like his mom did. We're shown Tsubaki as a child. She wants to train some kids to play baseball on the beach. Kosei says that he doesn't play baseball. She notices that Kosei has little footprints. Uh, Kosei tells her that her feet are just big. At school, still as kids. She asks Kosei to play at OG Park, however, he has piano lessons. So still as kids, she makes a med bowl and then decides to make another one for Kosei. In music class, Tsubaki calls music stupid and hates it. Back in the present, Kaori yells at Kosei and asks if he's even practicing. Tsubaki tells him to stop talking about things that she doesn't understand. K Kashiwagi talks to Watari about Tsubaki. Watari says that she has to figure it out herself. Kashiwagi internally says that she, uh, Tsubaki has to realize the guy standing next to her is not her little brother. She also says that people usually don't figure it out until it's too late. Strange things then start happening to Kosei. Um, a, smear, a mysterious person secretly watches Kosei and grades him. Kosei's uh, sen uh, teacher or sensei uh, approaches Kosei and asks what high school he wants to go to and his career plan. Kosei is still undecided. Tsubaki and Saito-senpai walk home together. 
Subaki keeps talking about Kose though. At night, Subaki walks alone and talks to Kashiwagi on the phone. Kashiwagi says that everyone knows the truth. She asks herself uh, who she likes. Or, um, Subaki does that after the phone call. Kose suddenly runs her and tells her that Kashiwagi called and said that Subaki was in trouble. They walk on a beach. Subaki notices that Kose's footprints are bigger than hers. And when his eyes meet hers, her heart jumps. Subaki admits that even a musical amateur like her can tell that he's the kind of penis that can express certain things. He admits that he's going to a high school with a music program and that they're all far away. He's going to leave home. Subaki cries and runs away. She questions why she's crying. She remembers things with Kose and says that she's so stupid. At the end of the volume, we're shown Tsubaki as a child looking at two mud balls that she made and hopes that Kose's surprised. Thoughts on volume 7. Kose's performance. Wow. <laughs> I'll admit, man, after everything was said and done, saying goodbye, I, I, I got teary-eyed, man. Uh, and this was actually the second time I read this. I knew it was going to happen. Still, it was powerful, emotional. You don't even hear it, but, you know, it, it's expressed so well that um, you, you get the general idea, you know. I'd actually like to hear it, but uh, the manga does a really good job at conveying emotions so well. You know, and this performance was for his mother, and, and, man, at the end of the day, after all this hardship, slapping him, making him the human metronome, she loved her son. You know, at, at the end of the day, she did it for him. She uh, she cared about Kose very much, very deeply, to the point she was almost willing to just, she didn't care about herself, and, and just wanted Kose to be able to possibly make a life out of music, to the point, where, yeah, she did go too hard on him, when we know now that at the end of the day, she loved her son. She was a, a mother almost pretty much to the very end, even though she didn't always act like it or show it. Um, she knew her days were ending and Kosei's was still beginning, you know. I mean, he was just a kid, you know, and he... You know, how's he going to get around in the world without his mom? And, and the mom knew that. And that's why she acted the way she did. Um, Mike, you know, I, I think was greatly affected by Kosei's performance. Um, rightfully so. And you can tell that Kosei is changing with his, through his performances. Emmy, Aiza... Mike, Tsubaki, you know, um, Kauri. He's changing through music, through the piano. He is changing the people around him. Tsubaki obviously likes Kose. It's there. Kose revealed that he is moving to a music school far away. I don't know what that's going to happen. Tsubaki is with Saito Senpai. She obviously just keeps talking about Kosei with him. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last. <laughs> uh, but she likes him. We knew she liked him. But now it's just even more apparent than ever. She's kind of figuring out these feelings. Kosei seems a bit oblivious to it. How Kosei likes Kaori. Kaori likes Watari. You know. Seemingly so. Um, we'll see how that moves on forward. Kashiwagi is kind of like the voice of reason to Tsubaki, you know. Um, she's there to tell her what is, what's reality, what everyone's kind of thinking, what everyone knows. Very interesting character in a sense. She's kind of a side character, but she's kind of, she's kind of becoming a little more prevalent as the series goes on. Um... I said a lot about Hiroko, and that, none of that's really changed, you know, she just is kind of like the mother figure to Kosei at this point, pretty much is his mom at this point, and instructor, mentor, and whatnot. Um, it's, a, it's a good relationship to have for both of them. And Kari is still in the hospital. Um, 
really don't know what's uh what's going on. Seems like it's getting worse. She couldn't perform with Kose. Um and it, it's just kind of unfortunate, you know. I'd like to see the two make magic together through music. And unfortunately, because of her health, it's not to be. So, that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to this manga review. Next time, I will have a manga review for Your Lion April, Volumes 8 and 9, a reading of my short story, The Underachievers, pages uh, 3 and 4, and a movie review for Spider-Man Homecoming. Thank you, and until next time.